Lecture 12, Material Requirement Planning, MRP, and Enterprise Resource Planning, ERP. So first we're going to talk about dependent versus independent demand. So on the left is what might be considered independent demand, where the demand is fairly stable. It, it goes up and down a little bit, but it's fairly stable. And so then the question is, how much do you need on hand? So here you have on hand, you can have a little bit of safety stock. So you have you order, it goes down to the safety stock. You order again, it goes, it goes down. So that's a fairly straightforward. And this is what's called lumpy demand or dependent demand, where you have an order here, an order here, an order here, or demand. And so what you actually need on hand is at this point you need this much, at this point you need this much, at this point you need this much. So if that's fairly predictable, you can just order what you need when you need it. Material Requirements Planning, or MRP. So what this is, is a computer-based information system that takes your master schedule requirements for end items and puts time phase requirements for subassemblies, components, and raw materials. So the MRP is designed to answer three questions. What is needed? How much is needed? And when is it needed? So here's an overview of MRP. So the inputs are a master schedule. You have orders, you have forecast, and then uh, you also have design changes. The design changes go into the bill of materials, and then inventory. You have receipts and withdrawals from inventory. All of that data goes into the MRP computer program. And what comes out as primary reports are first you have changes, you have order releases, and planned order schedules. Secondary reports are exception reports, planning reports, performance control reports, and then the, the last is inventory transactions. So let's look at cumulative lead time. Let's say that it takes 10 weeks to do something. So the first week you, you place an order, you find out you need something, so it takes, there's a two week lead time. So from the time you place the order until it actually arrives is two weeks. Then you need three weeks for fabrication. So here's fabrication, then you get to subassembly, and then assembly, and so there you have a cumulative lead time of 10 weeks. So here's an example of a product structure tree. So here you have, at the top, you have a finished chair. The chair has front legs with a crossbar, a seat, and back legs, or side rails with back supports and the crossbar. So, so here's the product structure tree at the bottom. You have two legs, you have a crossbar, you had two rails, a crossbar, and three back supports. So if you're thinking about assembling this, you would assemble these two together, you'd assemble this together, you would take this and you'd put it together, you'd forward those into the assembly of the chair, and you'd have a finished chair. So here's an example of an assembly time chart you actually work backwards when you're when you're creating this so so here it, you know that it takes three weeks for the final ins assembly and inspection assembly B is sh faster than assembly A so you don't have to start on it until here um, you can procure this right here you can uh, this takes longer to pr procure and fabricate here you can procure this. These two have to be procured, fabricated, and then these two get put into this assembly. And so this lays out when you have to order things. 
Other MRP considerations, safety stock. So theoretically, you don't need a safety stock, but it's good to have, for strategic reasons, have a safety stock. If you have a bottleneck in, in process or varying scrap, rates may cause shortages downstream. So you're, you're, you're building that first assembly and, and suddenly uh, you have a QA problem, a quality assurance problem, and you have to scrap that. And, and so if you have a safety stock, you, you can build a, a follow-up item. Uh, shortages could occur if you have late or fabrication or assembly times longer than expected. Uh, lead times are variable. The concept of safety time is often used. So safety time is you order something so that it arrives, say, a week. If you want a one-week safety time, everything arrives a week before you need it. That way you eliminate the probability of, of not having it when you need it. Load reports. So if you look at this, here, this is what you have in production. Uh, this is your planned orders, and this is your expected orders down here. So right here, you know you have this much in production. But, but here you notice that this is over capacity. So what you might want to do is go ahead right in here and do full production to get this capacity because if you need it right here um, you need to do it early so then you're going along fine but then once again out here you have an expectation of excess or above capacity so you might want to move some of that production forward ERP so ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. And what this is, is a single, it's a large database that has a whole bunch of different functions built into it. So accounting and finance tends to be a central part of the ERP systems. It does things like general ledger, accounts payable, accounts receivable, payroll, income statements add balance sheets, things like that. Marketing, you can have lead generation, target marketing, direct sales, um, mail, all of those as part of a marketing module. Human resources, you can have all the information like hire date, salary, contact information, performance evaluations, purchasing, you can have vendor selection, price negotiation, purchase decision, bill payment, all that. Production planning. So that whole MRP that we talked about could be this production planning uh, as part of ERP. So uh, it, it could be the same ERP system or it could connect to it. Inventory management, uh, you identify your requirements, availability, your rules, inventory tracking. You can identify, you can use it for your distribution, uh, your third party shippers, shipping, delivery dates, tracking. Sales, uh, information on orders, invoices, tracking, orders, shipping. And then supply chain management, that whole uh, supplier, customer management, supply chain visibility, event management. Summary, dependent versus independent demand, MRP, cumulative lead time, assembly diagram and product tree, safety stock, load reports, and ERP.